If you're trying to lose weight, but you've been stuck in a cycle of weight loss and regain for a while, these three common mistakes are probably why. It took me five years to figure these out. So I'm gonna share with you what they are and exactly how I broke through them. So you can do it in 12 minutes rather than five years. Because once I made these adjustments, that's when I lost all the weight that I needed to lose in less than three months. And I never gained it back. Number one, exercise. When I went to grad school, I was 24 years old and 125 pounds. When I left four years later, I was 155 pounds. So I looked at my life and asked myself, what's changed? Before I started spending most of my time in classes or doing research and writing a dissertation, spending all of my time in front of a computer, I had been pretty fit and lean. I used to play soccer. I used to run sprints. I even did some weightlifting. So in my mind, I had gained weight because I didn't exercise anymore. So that's what I set my mind to doing. I joined a soccer league, but in that first game, I actually fell over running like five different times for no reason, like a stick in the wind. First lesson I learned, when you're out of shape or you've gained 30 or more pounds, your body doesn't move the same way you remember. So scratch soccer, that was way too embarrassing. Let's try weightlifting. Because if I could gain some muscle and burn some fat, it would boost my metabolism. But here's the tricky part about building muscle. In order to build, you have to have materials to work with. So you typically need to be eating more calories than you burn in order to gain muscle. And back then, nobody told me that exercise also makes you hungrier. Because the more calories you burn, the hungrier you get. And I also didn't know that exercise doesn't burn nearly as many calories as you might think. An hour lifting weights or doing cardio might burn 300 to 500 calories, depending on how hard you're training. And the post-workout protein shake that I drank after my workouts, they had more calories than that. If you're still eating unhealthy food, like I was, then it's a problem. I gained 20 more pounds in about a year and a half, which at the time I thought was great because 20 pounds of muscle, that's kind of cool. If only it were just muscle because I went from a 32 inch waist to a 36 inch waist. And I didn't learn this till later, but a pretty easy way to know if you're gaining body fat is if your waistline is growing. Because if it were just muscle, you wouldn't need to get bigger pants because muscle is denser than fat. So it takes up less space. So while your weight might not change all that much when you're replacing fat with muscle, your waistline should be shrinking. So this is how I learned the hard way that nutrition is what really controls your body weight more than anything else. And if you're significantly overweight when you start lifting weights, and you don't change your diet, you'll likely end up even more overweight. So moving into year three, I started focusing my attention on what really mattered, my diet. Years three and four, the not so golden years. We all know what the mainstream advice tells us. If we want to lose weight, it's all about a calorie deficit. A lot of people even tell us that what you eat doesn't matter all that much. As long as you track what you're eating and you're in a calorie deficit, then you're gonna lose weight. It's so simple, it has to make sense. And while there may be a little bit of truth behind it, the reality is, Different foods affect your body on a far deeper level than just the calories that they contain. If you eat 100 calories of Oreos, you're looking at two cookies, whereas 100 calories of lettuce is 20 cups. Logically, we can understand that two Oreos versus 20 cups of lettuce are gonna have different effects on how full we feel. These foods also have different nutrients, which is what your body is actually craving when it decides to send that signal to your brain to tell you that you're hungry. And then of course, it also has different effects on other hormones such as insulin, which is going to tell your body to store the calories as body fat or use the energy right now. 
but I bought into the mainstream advice because it's simple and I still wanted to eat junk food. So I focused on my calorie intake. I had to eat smaller portions because processed foods typically have more calories per serving. And I started eating smaller portions more frequently because I was hungry like all the time. So I spread my calories out across the entire day. Now I've heard other people say that when you're losing weight, hunger is a natural side effect. Lay off me, I'm starving. It's an inevitability, Mr. Anderson. But when you get to the point where your dreams are dominated by food, it might be a problem. And you can only invoke sheer willpower and discipline for a short period of time before your body's biological processes win out. Because you'll have to fight against not just hunger, but against your entire body. Because the longer you stay in a consistent calorie deficit, the more accustomed your body becomes to that smaller number of calories. It expects that you're only going to eat this small number of calories each day so it adjusts and your body decreases your metabolism so you don't burn as many calories the same thing happens when you do consistent cardio exercise you become more efficient with your calories which is why so many people regain all the weight that they lose shortly after they stop dieting and that's what happened to me I would lose some weight until I couldn't fight the hunger any longer then I would gain most of it back when I ate like a normal human being again. Then I'd hop right back on the hunger train and lose some more weight and gain it all back again. It was a glorious cycle. Now, there's all sorts of hacks and tricks for this problem. From carb cycling, calorie cycling, reverse dieting, all of these tricks are a lot of additional work. And it turns out they're entirely unnecessary. Because after year four, I finally learned that food quality matters far more than food quantity. Nine times out of 10, if you focus on improving your food quality, total calories naturally take care of itself. And once I figured this out, it was time to make my next big mistake. Elimination and strict rules. I'm an all or nothing kind of person. So when I learned that processed foods are probably the reason that I had gained all of the weight and why I couldn't keep the weight off after I lost it, I decided I was only going to eat real food. For more than an entire year, my default was to avoid any food that didn't look like what it started as. If it was packaged or had a slew of ingredients in the list, I simply wouldn't eat it. And I set these incredibly strict rules for myself. But sometimes, I had to break them. If I went out to eat with friends, if I was invited to a party and I didn't want to seem rude, if a neighbor dropped off cookies for my birthday, birthday? birthday. And when I would eat something that was not allowed, it would trigger guilt and shame and anxiety. And let's not forget that a lot of these off-limit foods taste amazing. Pizza, cinnamon rolls, nachos. These are a few of my favorite things. Is that how the song goes? So I decide today I'm going to eat, drink, and be merry for tomorrow we get back on track. And while I did drop some weight in year five, most of my time was spent wavering back and forth again. Lose some weight during the week, gain all that weight back on the weekends because my rules were too strict and they weren't realistic for me as a long-term way of eating. So now I knew that exercise didn't help me lose weight. Calorie counting didn't fix my problems. And I knew that eating better food did, but I couldn't seem to stick to my eating rules for very long. So I gave up and became a professional wrestler. That's a joke. I hope there's no professional wrestlers watching this. I'm not big enough for y'all to come after me. Here's what happened. Here's where everything changed for me. I took all of these mistakes and I took the concepts that I learned from them and I altered them ever so slightly. I decided to 
lose the body fat first before I started lifting weights. Instead of worrying about counting calories and tracking everything that I ate, I created a calorie deficit naturally by using intermittent fasting. And when I started using intermittent fasting, it gave me a lot more flexibility with what I ate. So I no longer needed any strict diet rules. In theory, nothing was off limits. Now I still tried to eat mostly real food and reduce my consumption of processed foods, but it was more like 80% real foods and 20% processed foods rather than 100% perfection. Once I made these adjustments, I lost more than 40 pounds in less than three months. And I've maintained this same weight now for close to 10 years. And I've outlined it all here for you to watch in this video. Oh, weird. I said 12 minutes and it only took me 10 and a half. So for the next minute and a half, you get to hear me sing. These are a few of my favorite things. Just kidding. Nobody wants to hear that. Go watch the video.